Uh, it is 827. Now, this has been described as the most significant shipwreck discovery since the Mary Rose. The Gloucester sank more than 400 years ago and has now been found off the coast of Norfolk. Yeah, you may remember the story. We've done it before on the programme. It was discovered by a pair of brothers after four years of searching and now some of its treasures are due to go on display, as Joe Black reports. On the seabed, a team of divers explore the site of a royal shipwreck. The Gloucester ran aground off the coast of Norfolk on the 6th of May, 1682. This discovery has been described as the most important maritime find since the Mary Rose. And it was found by two brothers from Norwich. Oh, look at that bottle. Put cork on the top as well. Julian and Lincoln Barnwell run a printing business but they're also experienced divers and have searched for shipwrecks for years. They challenged themselves to look for the Gloucester and after four years, they found her. This footage shows a rope, one of the ship's cannons, a wine bottle and the tip of one of the anchors. And this computer image of the site has been generated and shows how a lot of the ship is submerged in the sand. Hundreds of items from the Gloucester have been brought to the surface and now they're going on public display for the first time. Well, it's um, quite surreal, actually. Um, you know, and, and to sort of go from seeing them on the seabed and to, to sort of bring them out to the public and, and display them in such a lovely way is uh, something to be proud of. On board that fateful day was James, the Duke of York and future king. He survived, but hundreds died. And because the Gloucester sank so quickly, personal possessions were left behind. Now we're able to view them up close. One of the main exhibits is the ship's bell, but there are also items such as wine bottles, spoons and thimbles. Also brought up from the ship are combs, pipes and this leather pouch. Remarkably, some textiles discovered in chests have also been recovered. This petticoat, a collar and a hood are all made from silk. Objects which are so rare to see that you normally, dress historians are looking in portraits and, and, and paintings um, to actually look at items that people are wearing and now we have the opportunity to actually look at them closely, examine how they're constructed um, and, and also just wonder at, the, the, at their beauty um, and craftsmanship. It's a real privilege to share this story for the first time with everybody. We're telling two stories, the story of the Gloucester in the, in the 17th century, the story of a, a tragedy, uh, almost losing the heir to the throne, but we're also telling the 21st century story of the second life of the Gloucester with Julian and Lincoln and, and James Little finding it in 2007 and from there bringing it to, to everybody's attention. What we see here is just a small sample of artefacts. The seabed holds many more. What I can't stop thinking about is ornate wood. So um, if we were to find some ornate wood, that the ship in the day was actually um, covered in gold leaf um, on the stern. And um, to find something like that, gold obviously doesn't um, deteriorate. So to find something beautiful like that, I mean, it's just, you know, it's all there to be found, hopefully. So we know there's 20 cannons on the surface, on the seabed. She would have been having between 50 and 60 cannons, and to have the whole collection from one, one site is quite unusual. So we would really build a strong case for recovering the cannons. So that would be quite a moment, wouldn't it? Mm. There are many more years of diving, discovery and research to come. But for now, we already know and understand so much more about the Gloucester and her last voyage. Joe Black, BBC News. Well worth the wait, hey? Mm. Right, um, it's 8.31, stay with us, the sport is on the way. <laughs> 